Man, well, it has been a full marathon of running this car lately. I have done so many back-to-back um, -back competitions and testing and because the engine was out and we tested two weeks before that, like back-to-back, -back, and then the engine back in and it's FL2K, um, streetcar takeover, no time shootout, uh, and now back up to Gainesville this weekend for the 352 shootout and just trying to turn the car around here. And um, I'll tell you guys, I'm about tapped. I am about tapped on um, like my energy level to race right now because um, it's been it's been a lot, but I love it. It's it's great when you're there, getting there, the build up, getting the car prepped, turned around, all that stuff is a whole thing, but when you're there racing, that's when it's all great. But I'm also tapped in, I'm running out of nitrous, running out of fuel. Um, I need to get some more of that Ignite Yellow. I think I have some at Bradenton, but I'm not 100% sure, I gotta go check. But running low on fuel, running out of nitrous, um, the car has so many laps on it, but all the fluids are fresh and, man, that's just where I'm at. So, love it, not complaining, just telling you guys what the deal is and how how we're doing right now so uh i gotta get the car turned around here oh i got new tires coming hopefully those will be here tomorrow so we can swap these guys out because they're a little they're shot they've been on there for so long now probably three years since i got this car since it was ls swapped the, those tires have been on there those they've been on there forever so replacing them we're changing it up i'm trying something different uh making sure it's a dot tire so that that same stuff that happened at TX2K doesn't happen. Um, what else? Oh, um, I gotta go through all my wiring. Not like any crazy wiring. I just wanna need to, um, for the 352 shootout there, they seem to be pretty strict about um, making sure that the car is like headlights, taillights, blinkers, all that good stuff, turn signals, those kind of things. and. I think I said that twice, turn signals and blinkers are the same thing, but um, I got want to double check if that works because I have not used those in forever. I know the headlights work, I know the brake lights work. I'm not 100% on the blinkers still working, um, but also there might be a 30 mile street cruise there, so that adds the level of work towards to me where I have to make sure that we're fueled up and stuff. I know that the car is not gonna get hot, but it's just, it's just one more thing. But I'm pumped. I'm, I've never been to the 352 shootout, so I'm excited to go race at this. But let's get it. Let's get to it. Um, also, that the last few videos of the racing have been freaking awesome. I hope you guys are pumped about them. So I've been racing the car for a while now, basically with no passenger seat. Um, I took it out and put it in the Mustang, and I was like, all right, I'll buy a new one for this car. And then as the rules and races kept coming up, I realized I didn't need a passenger seat and it's so much easier without it. It just, it's cleaner and stuff. But I had the harnesses in there still because I was like, you know, they're not that heavy and I'm probably gonna put a passenger seat back in it. And today I was just sitting here thinking like, let me take out the passenger. Let me take out the passenger harnesses. Um, you really only need a lap belt in the passenger anyways, but I took that out also. Um, I'll probably put a passenger seat in it. At some point, it, it would literally take me 10 minutes to put it all back in, pull the seat out of the Mustang, bolt it back in, yada, yada, yada. But um, I took it all out and then I weighed it and it's actually seven pounds for just the harnesses. So seven pounds off the car with just harnesses and the hardware. So that's pretty cool. And then it can just go back in whenever I need it. If a class requires a passenger seat, I'll put it back in, but honestly, most of them don't. And it's so nice without it, especially for traveling. I can just keep all my gear in there. All right, guys, guess what just showed up? Also, Bronte gave me a fresh haircut, but I was just talking about it. Um, tires, I ordered them, I think, this weekend? Like, they came pretty quick. So, switching it up, these are the uh, the M&H uh, Race Masters DOT front tires, and these are the uh, Mickey Thompson something something, I don't know. Um, but these have a little bit nicer looking of a sidewall. Um, I don't know weight difference, but these are DOT. These are not. These are going on. These are old. These need to come off. And now the fun, because I don't know how easy it is to gonna be to uh, swap these. I did these ones a long time ago, 
Uh, James taught me how. That's how long ago this was. It was at the old shop up in Clearwater. And these guys, um, I don't know. These are a little bit stiffer of a sidewall and stuff, but I think it's gonna look a good bit better as well. So I'm excited to see the difference. Um, so let's get this car jacked up, pull the wheels off and start getting some tires off. Well, these are always difficult to do, but uh, just did it and it's good to go. So you guys can see here the difference. So this is the new tire. You can see it's definitely a lot more of like a, like a true sidewall. Okay, so I just weighed them and they are exactly the same weight to the ounce, like exactly. So just gonna put these new guys on. This is the old one, this is the new one. Uh, the new one's a little shorter, so that's a little bit of a bummer. I wish that it was taller because they look a little small when they're on, but eh. the other option was a 28. This is a 26, but I thought the 28 would have like too much looking sidewall. So, no problem. Time to pop these guys on. Well, it's sitting pretty nice now. Um, I, I like the look of these tires better. Um, this is a 26 by four and a half by 17. The ones that just came off of it were a 26 by four by 17. So these are technically supposed to be a little bigger, um, more like width, but the sidewall is definitely measured a little bit smaller. Uh, they're not aired up all the way yet, but um, they're, they're not like huge. They do sell a 27 and a half by four and a half, so that would have probably filled out the wheel well a lot better, but um, I was just looking and those were back ordered anyways. They were way out of stock, weren't gonna be in for a long time, um, and I didn't really wanna change tire size, but I was hoping that this would just be like the same, but obviously all tires fit a little differently. Um, I, don't, I don't think anything's wrong with that. As long as it doesn't hit going up the trailer, we're fine, but I think I'm just overthinking it, and I think it looks exactly the same but maybe a 28 would fill it out a little better, but a smaller tire does get you a better uh, reaction time because there's less rollout. Um, just science of drag racing, but um, yeah, I'm happy with this. They look better. They'll probably drive a little better. I think they'll be a little stiffer. Um, just the nature of these tires. Those other tires are pretty soft and squishy. Um, these are technically a bias ply as well, I'm pretty sure, but um, from what I've seen, they're a lot stiffer. So. When I bump, maybe it'll be less aggressive and won't do that like bouncing thing. Um, I'll probably, I probably still need to turn down my bump, but I've just never really messed with it once it started working because I don't like messing with something that works. So just, um, yeah, all done. Time to uh, wait on a couple more parts and this thing should be ready to go for this weekend. So we're getting very close, very close. Here it is, got me my uh, fuel jug finally. This thing's been sitting at Bradenton forever, like a year now, almost has been sitting there. It's um, Ignite Yellow, the good stuff that I run in the Camaro, and we needed some fuel, so I swung by Bradenton last night, grabbed this, unload this thing. It's like, it's a 55 gallon drum, and it probably has about 40 gallons in it right now from stuff that I've already taken out over in the past. A little sketchy, but it worked. And I think my back hurts from loading it onto here last night. Okay, let's get this thing unloaded without dying. Okay, let's see if I can do this without getting maimed or injured. I don't know what maimed actually means. I've just heard it said before. Okay, well, you guys know, you've probably seen it a billion times by now, the sticker on the back windshield. Um, I had a bunch of stickers on there, uh, Motion, Pro EFI, ATF, uh, BPA, um, Precision, 
and ignite racing fuels and i was just like feeling like bored of this i've been kind of collecting the stickers to redo them and i wanted to change it up a little some most of the stickers i really had already but i added uh 1320 video i took all of them off the side so there's only the induction one and then the induction one there and the badges nothing else so i changed it up on the side here i want to try this out um motion raceworks bpa fast forward race engines and 1320 on this side uh passenger side i like the look of that um, it's a little busy. It was nice with just the motion, but I got to fit everybody in and I wanted it to be like a stripe almost. So trying this out, if I really like it, I could get some custom stuff made by uh, my boy Crispy over at Project Prime. And then over here, these ones are a little more busy looking and they're kind of crooked almost, but still trying to figure it out. Um, these will probably get redone the same way. Uh, TISS Fab, they did the uh, titanium. All the titanium is from them. ATF Speed, you guys know they built the trans. SRQ Performance, filling me up with nitrous. Ignite, racing fuel, always keeping me fueled up. And Precision Turbo, because that's the turbo we got. So, uh, changed it up a little bit over here. It's, it's like not crooked, but it is, because the way that this door slopes down and then the line goes up, like there's really no perfect way to do it. And I kind of just winged it, but um, I have all of these stickers and I kind of want to get things custom made like a stripe and then maybe have like a negative space basically where it's one solid bar and then everything's cut into it. That would be the goal. And yeah, so that's where we're at. Just trying out something new here. And oh, and I've always had this motion one back here, my burnout sticker. Everybody needs a burnout sticker. But yeah, I wanted to try out the rear windshield being clean. It's always been very cluttered. Um, I don't have a Pro EFI sticker, so that's the last thing I need is Pro EFI, and then good to go. So really pumped with this. I like the change up. Um, I get bored of things after too long, and I've looked at this like this for the last two years, that motion sticker. Um, it's starting to peel off and stuff, so start fresh, but let me know what you guys think. Should I? I, I would like to do just like a black stripe across the whole bottom and then everything else be like a negative cut in where you just see the pewter behind it. That's probably what I'll end up doing because I do like this, but I want to change it up. So this is a, uh, this is a good, good uh, entry into things. All right, so we've talked about it a bunch, the turbo smokes when I let off the gas. Um, it was doing that at TX2K and time to uh, change this a little bit. So this is the fitting that allows oil into the turbo it is pretty large and this is the one that i'm switching to it's very tiny and there's actually um there's a couple different uh allen headed deals that screw in to the top here and restrict the oil even more so an oil restrictor time to pop this thing in and um we'll go test this weekend and see if this fixes our problem so uh ball bearing turbos don't need that much oil or that much pressure like they only need about 40 psi and this motor puts out about 120 and especially when you're wide open throttle and lift the oil pressure spikes the turbo's still ripping all kinds of good stuff there's crankcase pressure good things like that so this hopefully will solve our problem um if it doesn't the only other way to solve the problem is a uh, turbo smart regulator and I didn't do one of those because this is like 20 bucks, so I wanted to try this first, and it's a lot cleaner. The Turbo Smart one, um, you need a return line, it, you need a line that goes into it, and then you need a line that comes out of it. So it's it's more like a fuel pressure regulator, and it's a lot more to uh, hook up, and cost more, and lines, and all kinds of stuff to make. You gotta drain it back to the pan. Like It's, it's a whole process. Not against doing that, but this should be a uh, if this is the right solution, then this will be a cleaner option and an easier option and a cheaper option. So hoping for the best, but we'll see. And um, yeah, we'll get to it like that. If this doesn't solve the problem, then we'll look into the TurboSmart deal. So let's get this thing installed. Okay, so I am switching fittings here. So this is the what I'm taking out. I had to switch to my iPhone just to really show you guys. And this is what's going in. So... These are the two options, well, three options. So the the one already on the car is still smaller than this one. 
but these are the two other options to try to slow down oil pressure and look at the size difference so that literally just covers it completely and some there's room to spare you could almost fit both of them in there but that's how much smaller we're talking about here and then obviously this is the size of it currently so we're gonna start off with the bigger one and see how that fixes things and then go to the smaller one if it doesn't fix things but i'm i'm feeling very confident now this gigantic unit off this unit on all right well this thing's about ready to go for tomorrow now we'll load up tomorrow and head up to gainesville this weekend so we'll be in uh gainesville um you guys will probably be seeing this friday so tomorrow we'll be in gainesville at the gainesville raceway racing and i'm super pumped because i've only raced at that track twice now so this will be the third time but um uh, yeah i'm excited to see how this race goes um it's a new one for us we haven't been to this race ever so i'm i'm excited glad to go support a local track and a local race local florida but local race and uh put some more laps on the car i'm really excited to see if this fixes our oil issue so i ended up switching up to the bigger one um, there's two so I switched to the bigger one and if it still doesn't go away then I'll switch to the smaller one But uh, these ball bearing precision turbos don't need a ton of oil if this was like a journal bearing It would need all the oil, but these ball bearing they just need they they just need a little bit They don't need a huge amount like you would you would think so all that oil pressure is mostly just going to waste anyway I don't know. I'm just rambling, but I actually did want to sit down and talk about um some stuff i've been giving some self-reflecting lately and i wanted to talk to you guys about it so let's pull up a chair and talk because there's some interesting stuff in this uh in this world and in my thoughts right now and i wanted to uh, i wanted to sit down and talk about them i'm gonna bust my ass so i'm gonna try to make this short and sweet so I was self-reflecting the other day. I was listening to somebody talk about what their goal in life is and what their mission is. Not goal, more mission. And I was like, man, what is my mission in life? Obviously, we want to have a healthy, successful life, family, all that good stuff. But what is my professional mission? And I started to think, like, what do I want to see out of the next five years? And what can I help push people towards? And that's when it came to me that there's one thing in this world you know obviously like one activity in this world that i just absolutely love and then obsessed with and think is the absolute best thing ever and want to see as many people do it as possible and that is racing car like that obviously not like that for everyone because there's so many different flavors of race car and so many different ways you can race and so many different ways you can enjoy this sport so many different entry level positions and price points and you can spend a million dollars you can spend fifty thousand dollars you can spend ten thousand dollars but my goal is i just want to see events racetracks and people you know well events and racetracks as full as possible the car counts as high as possible maxed out every weekend a race and i want to see people with cars and that's what i hope to inspire and that's what i've come to realize that I hope that this whole channel and everything I do can inspire people out there to go build a race car, go race, whatever. Like, if you have a car already, you can go race it. FL2K, Street Heat, um, 352 Shootout, like, all these races have things for entry-level people, and I think a lot of people don't realize that. The roll racing I did the other day, people were there with stock Hellcats and, you know, Corvettes and, like, bone stock vehicles. And you can go and race them. You can go race anything. And that's the great thing about it. So whether you have a car now, you should go take it to the track. Whether you want to build a car, you should do that too. But that's what I would hope to inspire and see more people doing because I think this is the best sport ever. It challenges you in every single way possible like no other thing can. And I just think, you know, careers are made here lifelong friends are made here and it's just a great group of people nobody shows up to the racetrack with a mindset of they don't like it here or a negative mindset like everybody that works at a track is in a good mood like 
it's it's just a good sport and I hope to get people to the track as much as possible like these events that I talk about like come sit in the stands and watch it watch for a few hours a day walk around the pits talk to people see what's going on it is absolutely incredible what happens at these racetracks and the people that the racetrack brings out like there's nothing else in the world like this kids are out there racing junior dragsters adults are out there racing their cars i'm out there with my car and you know it's not the most expensive or nice car in the world but man i get to put a lot of laps on it for relatively cheap you know once you build this thing and you have a good system and you start working with the right people of course you know everything like that comes in time you work with the right people over time you have to build a car go out there before you can you know get sponsors and get people looking at you it takes work but that's all part of why this is so rewarding if it was not hard work if it was not difficult nobody would like it which is exactly why there's so many great people in it because everybody's in the same situation nobody i don't care how fast you go or how many people are on your team you're in the same situation as me when you pull up to the line that's what it comes down to because it's it's a team sport until you pull up to the line and i don't know i'm kind of just rambling but that's that's my my goal and my aspiration is to hopefully influence as many people as i can to come out to the racetrack spectate become a participant in the racetrack help a team whatever you want to do some people want to be just part of a team and there's so many people that need some help with something you know maybe there's some guy that's out there bracket racing his car or some guy that's out there you know even somebody like me i'm out there by myself a lot of the time i have so many people that help me and help me and bronte that i've met through this and you can you know obviously become somebody like that for somebody and then you start racing your own car and it just kind of snowballs and it's just a great community so i highly employ anybody to go to a racetrack go to a test and two night find somebody with a car like yours or a car you like start talking to them and suddenly you will realize that this sport is the best because that's where all the people are that you probably want to hang out with so if you have any car, leave your house and go to a test and tune. It doesn't matter how fast it is. That's that's what you should be doing because, you know, what, your car's on 93, you drive it to the track. If it's some stock car, it's probably not gonna break. It's gonna burn a couple gallons of gas. You're gonna spend 15 bucks and you go race all night and it's just the best thing ever. So again, I employ everybody to do it. Um, start learning, start doing it. You can pick up so much knowledge from you know, not exactly me. I try to give as much as possible, but obviously I'm still, you know, learning as I go as well. There's a lot of other people that give a lot of knowledge. Um, so that's where I'm at, guys. Um, this was kind of a weird end of the video, but it was my rant of drag racing and why I think everybody should be doing it. So if you guys... uh if you guys have any questions or comments, I know some of you guys are going to say it's very expensive to get into, and I get that. I was in that same boat. I had the V1. I broke it all the time. It had no sponsors on it. It was just me out there enjoying it. I signed up for races that were months out, and I was just like, I'll figure it out when I get there, and that's what that's what I did. So, um, yeah, I used to drive it to the track and everything. Drive it to the track, break it, figure out how to get it home, but that's where we're at, guys, but... Um, I'm going to end it there. Let me know what you guys think of the rant, but that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Keep it saucy. I'll see you next time.